everyone, Rogold here, and today we are back with another Division Heartland video. Now that the game has gotten its public and official reveal at Ubisoft Forward, there's no more secrecy, at least not in the sense of Ubisoft and Red Storm barely acknowledging the game. If you've been on Twitter or other socials at all lately, you'll likely have seen that Heartland is just getting a lot of hype pumped out right now. So that's the first thing I want to take a look at. But then additionally, Red Storm also released an article the other day that contains some very key, very interesting information, filling us in on some of the behind the scenes of development, revealing that there are indeed some support studios working on the game, uh, some that have even joined on very recently, and then the article even drops a few minor hints about game details. So I'm super excited to go through all of this. Uh, it's so awesome that we're just regularly hearing about Heartland stuff now, and it's not being treated like it doesn't exist, and you all know that I've got you covered with coverage of any and all relevant Heartland information and news, and that ain't gonna stop now. So without further ado, let's get into this latest information. All right, so like I was saying, the social media pipeline is kind of the first place that I wanted to start here. We're looking at the Division's official Twitter account, which again, like I mentioned in my last Heartland video, they've now rebranded to just encompass the entire uh, Division universe, which I think is really awesome. But they said back on September 16th, which was, you know, only a few days ago, register now for a chance to play and send your early feedback on the Division Heartland. We can't wait to see you in Silver Creek with, of course... The, uh, the key art image there. Now, this is nothing different than we've seen them say in the past, right? But again, ever since Ubisoft Forward, it's just really awesome to see that they're continually talking and promoting this testing for the game. But then it was, what, the day after? Or, you know, maybe a day or two after? They sent another one. It was their next post. We're setting up a flare agents. Register now for the Division Heartland closed test with that pretty cool uh, little graphic there at the bottom. So the wording that makes it sound like there would be one coming up pretty soon. I mean, it would make sense considering they've been pushing it so hard lately. And, you know, back in July, um, when they said that there was a close test that had happened in June, they said there will be more happening pretty soon. So who knows if there's going to be another one in these upcoming weeks. But I just found it pretty notable and interesting that they're sending out so many of these reminders to sign up. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people in the comments of of those two posts in other places who've been like, well, I signed up, you know, over a year ago when they announced it and I've never been contacted for anything. And I know that can suck to just, you know, feel like you're waiting endlessly and endlessly and still we still have very few details about the game we finally got some gameplay in the trailer and all that stuff and that's great but i know it sucks to wait what i will say is if you're a fan of the division and you feel like your voice deserves to be heard or that you have something good you can contribute to the overall experience of this next iteration of the division then be patient you never know what will happen and if you do end up partaking in any of these close tests your feedback could make the game better than it already was and i think that would be a pretty cool experience so keep your head up you never know what will happen and we'll see if we hear anything about a new close test for heartland in the coming weeks all right, now I want to move on to what is probably the more interesting thing that we're going to cover today, and that is this article that they put out the other day. This one over here was just a recap of everything we learned at Ubisoft Forward that Red Storm reposted on their site. This one is new as of when I'm recording this, that they have just uh, promoted a new managing director, so that's pretty interesting. But this is the one that I want to talk about Um I don't know when the, the data was posted, but it's called Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland, a collaborative effort. And this talks about not only support studios for the game that we hadn't really heard about before, but like I said, shares a few interesting game details that we'll talk about, and it seems pretty intriguing. All right, so I'm just going to read through some of this, and we'll talk about it as we go. Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland, combining expertise across studios to build an ambitious free-to-play title. The first details of Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland were publicly shared last weekend at our digital conference, Ubisoft Forward. We asked the teams in the U.S. and Finland about their experience is kicking off a collaboration across two continents during a global pandemic and how they made it work. The greater level, Tom Clancy's The Division Heartland set in the Division universe has been in development uh, with collaboration between the lead studio of Red Storm Entertainment, obviously we knew that, Ubisoft Red Links in Finland, that's new, and Bucharest in Romania. So there we go, the same studio that is supporting The Division 2 currently also has support going to The Division Heartland. That's pretty interesting. The collaboration started during the pandemic, and to date, the teams of the three studios have never actually met each other physically. This has put particular emphasis on team building. All right, and then down here, you got a quotes from a few different uh, people on the teams. Obviously, Tony is a big senior producer at Red Star, been with the division for a long time. Uh, marketing director Valentina and somebody from uh, Red Links over there and just talking about the different work-life balance of the game and, you know, working across different time zones, all that stuff. Pretty interesting, but this is really wanted, where I wanted to get into down here. How to collaborate successfully. The collaboration with Red Link started with was, what, first, a very small team. With about 30 people currently on the project, the studio is working on a range of areas from feature and content 
to audio and replayable missions, as well as marketing. The Bucharest studio has been involved with Heartland since this summer, with fewer people offering specific expertise embedded within the team. They have also contributed most of the quality control on the game. In addition, test teams in Kiev and Odessa have also previously contributed to the project. Okay, so this paragraph here has a lot of interesting details. The first one is here that they're working on a range of areas from feature and content to audio and replayable missions. That'll be interesting to see what that pans out to be in the game. And then obviously they're working on marketing as well. But then it says the Bucharest studio has been involved with Heartland since this summer. And that I find to be an interesting detail because what else was canceled this summer at Bucharest, the project that they were leading, Ghost Recon Frontline. Now, at the time, a lot of us had wondered if any of that team might be uh, shifted over to the Division 2 focus, since we know that Bucharest also has a team that supports the Division 2's ongoing content. But to hear that this summer they had people join on to the Heartland team, I wouldn't be surprised at all if a lot or, you know, the majority or all of those people came from the canceled Frontline project. It then, of course, says that they have also contributed most of the quality control on the game, which to my understanding of what that is in game development, that's um, primarily like, you know, testing, QA type of stuff. So who really knows what stage of the game they might be at and what they might be testing. But just to know that all of these different pieces are going in to make this combined effort, it's pretty cool. And to know that there are two support studios. I mean, we had never heard about Red Links being a part of it. To be honest with you, I didn't even know that was a studio until I looked it up the other day. But to know that all these studios are working together with Red Storm to make Heartland happen, it's just cool to see. And it gives me hope that even in the last few months, they're still putting more and more people and resources onto the Heartland project. You know, I still see a lot of people like skeptical, oh, this game's going to come out in like three years from now or it's going to get canceled. Clearly it's happening. They just announced it. They're putting more people on the project. A matter of when, we don't know, but just to see that it is still getting support and continuing resources, it's just pretty inspiring to see. So that's about the majority of what I wanted to point out from this article and then just talks about a few more quotes from different people. This last one's pretty nice. From senior 3D artist, not going to say that name because I'll butcher it. I apologize. From the Red Links team, Heartland is the biggest project he's been on by far. For him, working on it has been a very rewarding professionally. It's really been really great to contribute to Heartland and learn about how productions of this scale are made. I've also truly enjoyed getting to know our new colleagues from the other side of the Atlantic. So in a lot of ways, this is mimicking what Redstorm was to Massive back during Division 1 and 2. Obviously, Massive is in Sweden. Redstorm is in North Carolina. There's a lot of different time zones there, a lot of different cultures. And so, I don't know. This kind of collaboration just brings up a, sen a sense of familiarity and nostalgia. And again, whatever Heartland ends up being in the final product, what it contains, what these different teams contributed, it's just going to be really cool to see. And of course, it wouldn't be a Heartland post if they didn't plug that there are upcoming tests that are coming soon. So again, like those uh, marketing posts, we'll see if that turns out to be anything pretty soon. But especially this paragraph, I think was the most interesting part of this article for me. The fact that they talk about that Red Links is helping out with uh, feature and content to audio and replayable missions. Interested to see what that'll end up being. And then, of course, the fact that Bucharest and more resources have been put on the game in these last few months. It's just, uh, you know, pretty intriguing. And we'll see what it uh, ends up manifesting into. All right, folks. And that is your breakdown of the latest Division Heartland news. I thought this stuff, especially that new article, was very interesting. It's awesome to know that Ubisoft is putting more resources into this project and to see that substantial movement has been happening on it in just these past few months. Like I talked about in my previous Heartland breakdown video, which I will link in the upper corner if you missed it, the game is likely at most six months out. And so while of course it sucks to wait, I think anybody who's truly upset at the time it's taken for us to get to this point needs to think about how they reacted to TU-16's launch or Warlords of New York. People hate waiting, but I'd argue they hate buggy launches even more. So if these resources and this time can help Heartland avoid that as much as possible, then I think we're in for a fun time. And I think a lot of people will be thankful for that when the time does indeed come for the game to come out. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe with notifications on to be updated every time I upload. Let me know your thoughts about this new Heartland information. Do you think the game has a close test approaching in the you know coming weeks given all the reminders to sign up lately? And what do you think about hearing that Redstorm has two support studios behind them? As I've said before, I think it's just really awesome in my opinion that Redstorm is finally getting to lead their own project after supporting Massive and The Division 1 and 2 for so long. And so yeah, wherever the Heartland road takes us next, I'm just excited to be along for the ride. That's going to do it for me today though everybody once again thank you all so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and until the next one guys bro gold ow